So my name is Cheng Hao Tan, and uh, I will be the main speaker of this paper today. And this paper will be about the compliance analysis of the uh, Australia's online household appliances. So this is a joint work collaboratively between the Monash University and a regulated body in Australia. So it's called Energy Safe Victoria. So this will be the content that I'll be presenting today. And first I will be uh, introducing the projects and also the objectives of why are we doing this project. Next, I would also talk about the overall architectures of how we actually achieve uh, the compliance check process. And next, I will present the result analysis. And lastly, will be the conclusion. So um, according to Statista, around 69% of the uh, total market revenue in the household appliances segment will be generated through uh, online platforms by 2024. So this means more and more purchases for, of the electrical appliances will be coming from uh, online platforms. So with the increasing usage of the online transactions, it also becomes uh, increasingly more challenging to govern the compliance status of the online products. So whether they are safe to be used or um, are they, are they uh, going through all the safe, safety regulations and safety checks? So therefore, the objective of this project is really just to analyze the um, compliance status of the household appliances sold on, uh, in online, Austra in, in online uh, platforms in Australia. Um, this is also to understand the overview of the uh, products compliance that is sold online in uh, Australia. So the second objective that we wanted to do this is also to because that um, we wanted to develop an automated way to check if the products are uh, compliance status before purchasing them online. So this allows users to have a way to check if uh, the products purchased online are compliance or not before they can uh, make the decision to buy or not. Here I will show the um, overall architectures of how of the proposed uh, methodology to do the automatic uh, compliance check in uh, this project. So first will definitely be the data collections where we collect data from different sources. So in this uh, method, we require three different data for these two these to work. So first will be the um, will be the compliance references. So that is the records from the regulated body, so Energy Safe Victoria. So this contains the uh, compliance entry models and brands, uh, the products that are compliance that are registered within the, uh, from, from regulated bodies. So the second uh, data that we need here is actually the online appliances listings. So these are collected from the different marketplaces such as catch marketplaces, eBay, Amazon, and et cetera. So this data, the online appliances data will be used as an input data for the compliance check algorithm uh, to determine if they are, they are compliance or not. The third, um, the third data sets that we require here is the online appliances listings images. So these are collected from online sources such as Google searches or um, some of the online marketplaces where we can download their commercial listings images. So this, this uh, appliance listing data images will be used further in for uh, image classification. So after the data collection, we do some pre-processing steps to train the model and uh, prepare the data into proper format that is uh, required for the compliance check. And after the compliance check, we process the raw results for visualizations and um, analysis. So first is the data collection steps where we uh, needed the three, three types of data as mentioned. So in the data collection phase, the compliance reference data is obtained from a regulated body, who, uh, which is Energy Safe Victoria. So this is also mainly used as a reference when checking for the compliance, uh, the product's compliance status. So it contains the brand's model uh, information as well as the registration and certification status. So we can um, really assume that any that any products that are not within this list are not registered, are not are not registered or uncertified. So they are not really regulated products. So next is the uh, appliances listing data from online sources. So we collected this data from eBay, Amazon, and cash marketplaces using some conventional scrapping methods or some of the APIs that they were provided by uh, the, the online, online platforms. So this data, um, this data access the inputs for the compliance checking where the data contains textual descriptions of the appliances and 
also some of the commercial images that represents the listings itself. The last data set, which is uh, the commercial appliances listings, um, we, we needed this, this, this data because we needed to train a CNN model for image classification to determine if the listings that were collected online, are they relevant to uh, our product of interest or not? So that's why we needed this uh, commercial appliances listing data to, to train a CNN model. And this data set uh, is collected by manual searches from the internet for downloading, uh, from downloading from Google searches and, as I mentioned, the uh, online platform's commercial listing data. So they are also manually labeled to fit uh, the, the classes that we wanted to train the CNN. So after the data collections, um, as a result, we do have around 2.6 million entries of the compliance references split up amongst the 30 categories, or you can uh, think of it as 233 subcategories. For the um, online appliances listings, we have collected around 85,000 listings split up amongst the Amazon, Cash, and eBay. And for the commercial um, appliances listings, we have collected around 30,000 uh, training images to train the CNN model. And finally, after the data collection phase, we pre-process each of these data set. So for the compliance references, we standardize all the entry formats and index all of them for a faster search. Um, for the online appliances listings, we also extract the data, texture data and the image imagery data. Uh, separately and transform them into a uh, common format across all the different marketplaces for, so that they can be used uh, within the same uh, compliance checking algorithm. For the commercial um, appliance listings, we also standardize the training images by doing some minor rotations, random flippings, uh, send the crops to uh, standard 256 two, two, pixels, and normalize the RGB values. And once we have all the uh, training images, what we do is to train the, the SCNN model with a v, VGG19 architecture uh, for multi-class classification. So we use the 233 subcategories for the training classes. Um, for the training settings, we train it for 100 epoch, a five-stop epoch, 128 batch size, and split it amongst the uh, data set for 8020 training and testing data sets. And as a result, on average, the CNN training accuracies can achieve around 88%, which is pretty good. So the lowest training accuracy here is 35%, which is from the class Bionet uh, LAM holder. So this is also because it's pretty similar to a switch LAM holder. In, so in the end, we actually just um, combine the two of the classes when doing the image classification. So yep, that's how we managed to uh, bump this image classification accuracy up. For the the next thing, the next thing that we did is actually to index the compliance references because, as I mentioned just now, that uh, we do have 2.6 million uh, compliance references to go through when doing the compliance check. So it's quite a large data set. So as mentioned, the compliance um, the compliance reference actually contains the brands, the models, certification status, and the registration status, and we index it by just. Uh, using the brands as the index and all the other, all the other uh, relevant informations like the models, certification status, registration status are used as the index contents. So that way we group all the documents by the uh, brands and the contents by the, the rest of the uh, contents for, from, the, from the compliance references data set. So the third thing that um, we'll do is to do the compliance check. So with the index compliance reference document and the transient model, we can then do the compliance um, compliance check for the online appliance listings. So we first extract the texture imagery, texture data and the imagery data separately. And the texture data will be used for texture matching and the imagery data will be used for the image classification. I will go into the details of these two uh, processes in the next few slides. So from the texture data, it then output a texture matching similarity scores and a Boolean status of whether a brand and a model information are actually found from the, from the texture data. For the image classification, it then outputs an image classification confidence score. And with these three metrics, we can then classify the online listings uh, into, three, into four, four, different, four, four different categories, which is 
the exact matches, potential matches, non-matches, and irrelevant listings. And for these listings that we have, that they are either uh, exact matches or potential matches, we extract the certification status and the registration status of the of the listings uh, from the compliance reference data sets to, to analyze if they are compliance or not. So for the textual data, it actually compromises of all the text text uh, text within the online listings uh, descriptions. So something like the title, the descriptions, the um, item specifications. And what we do with the textual data is that first we do the data preparation where we tokenize the textual data, remove any of the common words uh, and stop words and standard, standardize them by lemmatization. Then for each of the token, we then retrieve if there is any brands related documents. If there are, then we retrieve the entire index documents. The model information from the um, index documents are then extracted from the uh, index colored contents. The third step is actually to do a fuzzy match between the standardized textual inputs and the uh, extracted model information. This then outputs a matching similarity from the fuzzy logic. And if the similarity score is above 95%, then we determine that the um, relevant brands and model information is found from the uh, textual data. For the um, image classification, it, the image actually consists of the advertising uh, images, like the, any, any commercial advertising images, and the thumbnails that it uh, contains. So any, any image that we can find from the listings, we'll be, we'll be using it for image classification. So first is also to use the imagery data to do the data preparation, where we do a center crops and uh, normalize the RGB values. And for each of these images, we do image classification, which provides um, which, which, which provides us with a softmax percentage of the classification confidence from all of the classification um, confidence produced by all the images. So we get a max, we get the max confidence of from from each uh, from each category. Then only we extract the classification confidence uh, of the interested product category. So this then finally outputs the product category confidence that we needed for 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 categorizing the image into the different listing matching status that I've mentioned just now. And finally, with um, and finally, with, with the three metrics that we have obtained previously, which is the found status, so the Boolean found status, where the brands and model are found from the compliance references, the product category confidence, which is the confidence uh, from the CNN, and the matching similarity scores, which is the texture matching fuzzy, fuzzy logic score. So we can then categorize them into this listing matching status as mentioned. So as it matches, partial matches, non-matches, and irrelevant matches. Um, the exact matches means that um, means that for that for that particular listings, we are highly confident that uh, it contains the information that matches the compliance reference data sets, and the CNN also thinks that this particular product or this particular listings is actually relevant to our product of category. For the partial matches, there are actually two parts to 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 this. So first is that the CNN may have low confidence that the listings belongs to our interested product category, but the brands and the model are actually found from the textual data. So this type of situation is possibly that the CNN model during training have not observed uh, this type of uh, listings, listings images during, during training. So the corrective actions for this is really just to uh, download or, or extract more of this type of listing images for, for the CNN to train in the next iteration so that you can uh, recognize this type of listing images as uh, relevant uh, relevant products to to us. The second type of partial matching partial matches is that um, there are no brands and model information that are found from the textual data, but the CNN and the textual matching process thinks that this this particular listings is actually um, relevant to what we wanted. So this type of listings may require further review by by humans. So yeah, uh, it's it's probably mistakenly inputted the 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 listing there's probably some typos or some information that is mistakenly inputted into the listings uh, in the online platforms. 
So the third one will be the non-matches. So non-matches non listings means that the listings are relevant to our interested product category, but does not contain any brands or model information from the uh, compliance reference uh, data set. So this listing is highly likely not registered or certified product. And lastly, for the irrelevant listing, this is, these are the listings that are totally not relevant to um, our interest of product category. So an, an, an example of this is that when we are searching for washing machine in an online platform, so the, the search results may return us like a washing machine detergent and stuff like that, so which is really not um, interested like, or relevant to our search, search, search uh, interests. So um, if we represent these three metrics that I've mentioned just now with a circle like this, we can now form a Venn diagram to really analyze our results. So first is the listings that are not found from the, uh, which, which are not found, so they are ir irrelevant. Um, they have low product category confidence and so that um, we really mark them as irrelevant to what we wanted. Um, for the rest of the relevant listings, there are 55% of the listings that are non-matches. So this actually means that these products does not contain any of the compliance brands or model information. So they are highly likely unregistered bought products. 17% of the relevant listings contains the brands and model information that exactly matches to the compliance reference data sets. And another 19.1% also contains the brands and models information, but the CNN model thinks that um, it's, 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 it's not relevant to what we wanted. So this may require more training for the CNN model with the relevant uh, images from this type of listings. The rest, 7.7% are the listings that have high product category confidence and high matching, uh, text, texture matching similarity, but are not found from the uh, compliance references data sets. So this type of, listings are mostly listings that might just have missed out some of the minor details of the brands and models informations from their, from their online listing descriptions. And from the found listings, so again to reiterate, the found listings are listings that contain the model and the brand informations from the compliance reference data sets. So from, from, from these found listings, around 40% of them are compliance product. And compliance products means that uh, they are actually registered and certified from, uh, by, by a regulated body. The rest, 60% of them are actually non-compliance products, which, are, which, which just really means that they, they probably have some expired certifications or expired registration status from the regulated body where they just need to um, re-certify re, re it or re-register the, these type of products. From the partial matches, around 70% of them are um, found, but with low product category confidence. So this could essentially just mean two things. So either the CNN model is not trained with the similar images of the uh, listings, or is it uh, just a false positive from the textual matching algorithm. The rest of the partial matches listings are not found uh, they are not found, but has high texture matching similarity and high product category confidence. So this essentially just means that they are either a false, false negative or maybe there's some error in the database entries or the, uh, the, the seller has mistakenly inputted some of the listings details on the online platforms. So this uh, really just requires some manual reviews by, by human to determine if these type of listings, um, are, they, are they a false negative or not. And finally, from the, from the results, the categories that contains the highest percentage of compliance information online, such, uh, are such as the washing machines, microwave ovens, dish, dishwashing machines, and the cloth dryers. So these are the large appliances that are commonly purchased on online platforms with the uh, compliance, compliance informations. So the categories that contains the least percentage compliance Informations are something like the lamp holder, welding machines, building wiring cab cable. So these are the products that are not um, commonly purchased by consumers. So, so you, we, yeah, we can assume that when purchasing these type of products, it's highly likely that it's not um, compliant and not registered. So there's a risk there when purchasing something like a lamp holder, welding machines, and building wiring cable that 
uh, it contains risks that these products are not safe to be used by normal consumers where purchasing the, the, the products from the top categories, so the top four washing machines, cloth dryers, microwave ovens, they are probably safer where they contain the compliance references where you can double check with the uh, regulated bodies. So in conclusions, there is around 60% of the household appliances sold online and do not have the compliance, but do not have the compliance information. So this increases the risk of consumer buying unregulated products that may be unsafe. So consumers should be more aware that um, each household appliances needs to actually comply with a standard um, electrical equipment safety scheme imposed by different regions so that to ensure that they are safe to be used. And we also need to be more mindful on uh, our online purchases. So the future work for this is to incorporate a website for consumers to check if a listings listed online are they compliance or not and safe to be used before their purchase. And lastly is that we wanted to also expand the scope of this project to cover a wider range of uh, consumer products because right now we are do what we are doing is to do a compliance check on the products that are only uh, on the electrical, el electrical side. So we can also expand this to a guest, guest type of similar uh, products to, to double check their compliance status and are they safe to be used in normal households. Uh, situations. So that's all for my talk today and thank you. So are there any questions?